What's up, gang? It's Justin Khan. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna do a, another deck review. Last time, we reviewed some pitch decks. People seemed to like it, got a lot of views, got a lot of positive feedback. People said it was the best thing on the channel. To be honest, I don't think so. People seem to get a lot out of the pitch deck reviews, so we're gonna do some more. And uh, this time, I got a special surprise for you. I invited one of my very good friends, Gary Tan, founder of Initialize Capital, to do them with me. So if you don't know who Gary is, he's actually my inspiration for getting on YouTube. One of the best investors I know, recently all over the news and uh, the blogosphere and the internetosphere for turning a several hundred thousand dollar investment into Coinbase back in 2012 into several billion dollars. So, I mean, that's not nothing. If you're not following his YouTube, you should down below. He is one of the greatest, dispenses tons of great advice. So before we get into this video, I wanna tell you who the winner of the Dead Startup Toys is. It goes to Akbar Yunus, uh, who teaches as an adjunct lecturer at universities focusing on tech, hardware, innovation, and he says these toys would really grab the attention of students. Uh, and if he doesn't get the stuff, he'd still be able to share them a link to this video, which I appreciate. So Akbar, I'm gonna send you this. Uh, we'll get in touch and uh, now on to the video. Here we go. Live your window into VR and AR. We merge what are the we looking at here? With the real world. I think it's like uh, some sort of... I think she's wearing a headset or something. Okay, the virtual world is on the left, and then do I have to have a purple room? <laughs> That's the real world. The real In the real world, you're sideways in a purple room. Right, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's get into it. VR has a serious presentation problem. You can't see the player. It's nauseating, jittery, hard to follow, and hides a lot of player interactions with the world. All right, let's play the yeah, video. Yeah, I can see that. Here's the video. Okay. Okay. So it looks like standard VR, but you yeah, can see yourself. That Isn't that already happening? a part of VR? Part VR already of VR. does that, right? I don't I don't see any difference there uh, at all, to be honest. All right, let's go back to the deck. Oh. Justin, you got to get YouTube premium, man. You sit there watching ads, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Your time is too valuable. That's true. I don't know why I do. I think that every time I'm like, man, why am I watching these ads? You got to <laughs> like, upgrade I... to premium, man. It's worth how much, it. How much is it? Like $10, so like $10 right? bucks or something, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You earn it back in like one second. I know. I know. I'm an idiot. I like this is this is perfect example of how people don't value their own time. Oh dude, you gotta think about your time is like worth like ten thousand bucks an hour or something. It's nuts. Anyway. The funny the funny thing is I do list my time at ten thousand dollars an hour for like speaking or whatever and you know, Yeah, that's like, right. I yeah. But I won't pay ten dollars for YouTube. You premium. gotta pay ten dollars right. you know, your lifetime supply. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the video, it sounds like we couldn't really figure out what was unique to live versus not. Oh, but there's another video here, so maybe this is uh, like what it's supposed to be. So I guess you can see yourself as a player. I, I guess you're seeing yourself in the, via, in the thing. It's like a, it kind of looks like Tomb Raider view, right? Like third yeah. party view. Yeah, I, so. I guess I'm assuming that there's some sort of hardware, software technology, but but then here it says live powered trailers. I don't know what that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I guess that's slide two and we still don't know what it is. Yep. Which is, I mean, right. I think this is a standard thing that everyone needs to know. Like your slide deck has to be, has to like sort of stand on its own without anyone else, you know, explaining right. anything really. Like if you email it to somebody and then they open it up and they don't get it, they might not email you back and say, hey, clarifying question, what is your product? What is it? Yeah, they won't even do that. <laughs> okay, slide four, here we go. It's nascent, but every VR deck has this, by the way. They're always, yeah. it's like not about it's their about product. To it's about, there's gonna be hundreds of millions of active VR headsets very soon. I think that one thing to note is like, if you're gonna invest in VR, you probably already believe that. We're the most effective sales and marketing pipeline for VR games and videos with 3.5 billion views to our creator videos. Okay, so it sounds like they already have been doing this for some time. And then sales and marketing pipeline makes it sound like it's an ad network. And it's yeah. like trailers in the last one. So I guess it's an ad network for VR games. Yeah, it's a little confusing here because they say things like there's, if, I don't know if you can see it, you know, kind of, it's a little grayed out, but it says youtube.com slash PewDiePie, 100 million fans. It's like, is that, are they claiming PewDiePie or yeah. do they have Shroud on here who has 20 million on Twitch? Okay. Like, like if I am literally looking at a deck and I don't know what it is, like I'll just pop open the browser and then I guess now I can go to live.tv and can the website tell me what's going on? It's how I share VR experience. I can record myself in games, no post-production. 
and then see chat. And then so... there, I guess the avatars. Okay, I'm still very confused. I guess there's a desktop app that allows you to, if you have a, a green screen, you can record. <laughs> anyway. All right. We're going to keep... Yeah, well, we go away. Basically, if your website doesn't tell me what you are, then then we're really kind of in a you know just that's a that's a over a barrel. Place. Yeah, we're not in a good spot here. Okay. So live 1.0 for early adopters, 3.5 billion views. It's the leading mixed reality software to show yourself. So is it like an avatar in VR? I don't. Get I guess it. it's hard to. So if you're recording gameplay it sounds like it gives you another view i just don't know how it works with an existing game it says video production it's a video production app on the hero over on the like uh type of software in the category so maybe it's yeah maybe that's what you're saying is right it's like it's a video production app on top of uh, existing games that give you this like Im embodied avatar view yeah like a, that's like why you need the view. you need the green screen the purple screen yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So it is an ad network of some sort. So it's a creation tool and also an ad network. But this is saying something different. It's like here they're saying the world is moving from media platforms with ad impressions based revenue models to creators as a business with consumer payments based models. Which so are they saying that they're a consumer payment based model? I feel like this slide does not do anything. Everyone in the space is already going to be aware of all these businesses. Yeah. That didn't help you better understand what this thing was. Okay. Discoverability will go down. Sure. That's like saying babies need milk. Yeah. Unique access to creators is the future power position of Bloody Ocean. So, I mean, I guess that moves towards what you were saying, where, like, maybe they're an ad network of creators. Bloody Ocean Oceans. is kind of a interesting... I mean, I get what they're trying to say, but it's sort of like Red Ocean, Blue Ocean. I don't think you yeah. call it a Bloody Ocean. I think Red Ocean okay. might be the right term. Red Ocean is probably the right term, but we get what they mean, though, right? It's like more competition. Yeah. So here they're saying... I mean, this is interesting. It's like DAU has gone from what looks like somewhere between 250 and 500 or sorry like this, this graph is a little weird because... it's 500 to 1500 is that right yeah well so it's it... like in the beginning you know kind of it looks like the weird thing is like there's 500 here there's like two segments to 500 and then there's three to a thousand not so scale just, yeah they yeah, just chopped it, it from the bottom yeah it, yeah but it doesn't start at zero no but it looks like basically they went up to like from like 250 or 300 something DAU to 1250 DAU, which is in three years, which is not, not that's good. not fast. That's not fast enough, you know? Yeah. I mean, the good thing is they've been at it for a while. The bad thing is it's not really growing at what, even 2x a year. So this is interesting though. It says Live is in 50% of the top 100 Steam VR games, including Beat Games, Harmonix, Ubisoft, Resolution Games. That is interesting that they, they it seems like they're being used by some of the biggest games. We still don't know for what? Yeah. Why is the DAU? Um, oh, see, this is the problem. Okay, one of the things that's weird is 3.5 billion views seems like a lot, but then what are these DAU and MAU? Like, who is that? Those are the people who create content that are create the ads? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is like very confusing because it seems like maybe the 3.5 billion views, it's like live creators video reach. So it, it does seem like that might be inflated. That might be a number of like all the views of all the creators that have touched live or something like that. Like here they're saying live on YouTube, 1.3 billion views, live on TikTok, 1.2 billion views, live on Facebook, 1 billion views. I'm getting, I like, I'm having trouble translating like a 1000 DAU or 1200 DAU to like 1.3 billion views. Like that seems like a stretch. And I guess they're European because they're, they're using commas, right? Yes. This is the classic like- Virtuous uh, circle. Wheel. Yeah, we got a flywheel. Got it. Game devs integrate live. Creators make content. Live brand grows stronger. Live total reach grows. So I think what it, it must be an SDK that allows game creators to make a video where they're in this like third person avatar mode of them inside a v VR game. And then they upload that video to Twitch or to, you know, to YouTube or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. It looks okay. useful. Yeah. I wish they had spelled that out on slide like two or something because we're on slide 11 and we had to do a lot of sleuthing to figure out kind of what this is. I mean, or I had to stare at their homepage and watch the videos up top. And it's like there's someone taking a video and then it maps onto the actual gameplay. Yeah. All right. Content created last month, 31,000 hours. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not sure if that needs its own slide. The Steam app is the most popular casual shares, average four hours a month. Power creators are greater than 70 hours a month. This is kind of like an appendix slide in my opinion. It's like, is this the most... 
important. Yeah, I would throw that in the appendix. Yeah, but there's going to be way more headsets, basically. I'm sort of curious how they make money. Yeah, I think they need because there's no the pricing bottom. thing. I guess it's free on Steam, so and then they don't explicitly say ads, right? If they're going to make money on, uh, let's say they're selling developer tool, it's like going to be like Unity. Just they should just show if even if you're not making money right now, like a lot of people when you're not making money, you're afraid to like put something on there, but like just tell talk about the comps, right? Like developer gaming developer tools on other platforms that have grown to be really big, you know, what their models are or something like that, rather than just like not saying anything. Yeah, I don't know why I would use the mobile app. I mean, the hard part is like you're already in VR. So are you helping someone else record it using the mobile app? Maybe. Yeah, like maybe someone's recording you and then they like it like removes their background. Yeah, know. the other thing that I'm noticing is like each of these is its own slide, but there's not really an order to them. It's not telling a story. It's kind yeah. of like random, random pieces of like ideas that they have yeah. that are just thrown in here. And yeah, it's sort of like one, you know, but wait, there's more after another. And then what's <laughs> better is like, here's what it is. And here's why people love it. And then here's where we're going, right? Exactly. You got to tell a story in your pitch. I was always talking about that. You got to tell a story in your pitch decks. It's like the world's a certain way. Something happens. The world's a new way. Just like yeah. very simple. And it's tricky because each slide needs to say what it is and why it's important. And so this live mobile slide is tough because it's like intuitively, okay, when someone gets a mobile app, that's probably good. But these are like characteristics of the app, but there's no context. It's like, I don't understand who the customer is and how they would use it. And then does that even move forward with the business in any sort of meaningful way? All right. And then they have a mobile plan. Uh, once again... If we don't know what the mobile app is for, like we can't really care about the mobile plan. And then there's things that people say about it. Okay, this is actually probably pretty revealing. I use Live to make a YouTube Beat Saber videos with an avatar as a way of initially just trying to stay active during the pandemic. I created a YouTube channel and discovered Live, which amazingly led me to create my own presence, brand, and identity in social media. More, most importantly, I've met an amazing group of friends and VR enthusiasts. That's Medusa, who has 1.3 million fans. That's like, great. So, so it is a way to create content from VR games. Yeah, it sounds like basically if you are a VR streamer or VR YouTuber, you need th you use this and that's what you use, which is cool. I mean, if I knew yeah. that earlier, I would be really into this pitch probably because I'm like nascent market. And then, I, you know, both of us really dig things that help creators at this point, you know, being creators. Um, and then at that point, it's like, what do you do with this, right? If you know VR will be big and then you have happen to have all the creators, you know, it, it is intuitive that there's a way to turn that into a big business. And I'd rather, you know, it would have been good for me to be thinking about that on slide one or two instead of like, you know, five, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. What's up? No, no worries. Yeah, we need to, we need to learn that earlier in this, in this story. Yeah, it would have been better for us to know that and have that in our minds. And then what's cool for investors is if we know what it is, then it's actually a really fun place to be, to be like, oh, they have something figured out here. And then where could it go? Like, and then at that point, you're sort of uh, in like, yes, and like improv mode. And then that's actually the number one thing I can tell is the tell if we're going to invest or not. Like if we spend most of the pitch mode in um, yes, and, and like improv mode and like, wouldn't it be cool if we did X, Y, or Z? Yeah. Yeah, that's like buy signals right there for, for investors. So here's something that's interesting. It's like live is an important tool for VR game marketing. This is the co-founder of Beat Saber, which is like the number one game. And this is saying that they drove greater than 500 million views within the first three months of their game launch. Yeah, that's so awesome. I, I feel like really instead of positioning it as like, here's how many DAU are on this thing, it's more like what's the net impact to the games, right? Because it's the, really the market is like the game developers. Yeah, I think that's why we were confused. Like the DAU seemed very small, like 1,500, but then the outcomes was like, what What does that mean? 3.5 billion views. Right. I guess if that's it. It's there's very, very few people who create and then they happen to have all of them. I wouldn't even mention the DAU MA, MAU at that point. I would just say like, we have all of these people and they use us on a regular basis for the core content that they make. Right. All right, founders, we got Dr. Doom. Theo did a lot of incubators. This <laughs> yes. might be one of those sure things good. where like, pick one incubator that you're really proud of and like put that one on there. Don't put like three, you know? Like people don't really need to go through that many incubators and then having more is like not good. <laughs>
Okay, they have a team who has experience in gaming. Yeah, that's a good team. Our vision is a primary vehicle for AR, VR, game discovery. Oh, so they want to make their own platform. That makes sense. Instead of just being a creation tool, that's like always the dream. How do you become your own destination? So, I mean, that's okay. Like, like you're pitching this big vision. I think what it's missing is really just explaining here's why this is important to like some party, like game developers. Like here's, it creates this massive market engine for AR games. Like I would be like Beat Saber, number one game uses it. They got 500 million views. You know, that's the case study. And this is where we're going. I think it could be a lot shorter, but overall it seems kind of cool. It just yeah. was confusingly presented. Why is it called Latveria? I guess they're very East, Eastern European. Uh, we can click on this. It goes to a notion, um, which maybe explains this better. All right, but that's not the point of this pitch. So, we've been interviewed, <laughs> so let's go. Well, we'll go on to the next one. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of digging this. It's an interesting sort of thing that um, it could work. You know, they could turn this tech and these relationships into something bigger. But I don't really know what yet. It would have been cool to figure out what it was early and then spend like half an hour sort of, you know, going down the idea maze in your head. Like, these are the things they could do. It could be this. It could be that. Yep, for sure. Justin, Gary, hi. This is Dr. Doom. I just finished watching the epic roast of the Live Deck. And I'd be lying if I said that it didn't hurt extra much to have two of the people that at least at live we look up to the most and who know the creator and live streaming space better than a lot of folks didn't get what we do until slide 11 clearly we have a ton of work to do there i think that also highlights this problem that uh, certainly has happened to us in the past and i'm sure has happened to a lot of folks who are uh, listening or watching this where a lot of the feedback we get on our deck process comes from folks who are either existing investors or people who know live really well and so it's really hard to distance yourself potentially from that context that you have Getting you guys a sort of fresh reaction on it was really, really helpful. I only have a minute. I wish I had more. But in my last 15 seconds, what I would want to say is it would be awesome to have like an anime style redemption arc where folks like us who had a deck that maybe didn't hit the mark get to sort of try again in a, in a new series and sort of show us, show the improvement, show the Super Saiyan that is inside of all of us. Anyways, I'm really grateful for the feedback. It's uh, surprisingly fun to see your own deck on a YouTube video and having it sort of torn down. Uh, you guys were very gracious about it. So thanks again. Grateful. I'll see you all in the metaverse. All right. Next up, we got Hitchhike, a safe and convenient long distance ride sharing platform for college students. Okay. Compared to the last pitch, I love that they just said what it is. Yeah. It makes sense what it is. We're not wondering. Yeah. It's a long distance ride sharing platform for college students. That makes sense. There's comps. Yeah. That's, great. Okay. That's like, do you remember working with RideJoy? Yeah. Who I told that they should pivot to be like uh, UberX. Yeah. We both said uh, that. I'm sure everyone they, just, they met at YC told them to do that and they didn't do it. They didn't do they it. They could have but the other Lyft before Lyft. Zimride did, was actually long distance carpooling and did that exact pivot. Yeah, exactly. In their defense at the moment, they were like, we don't want to break any laws. Yes. I, what's the lesson there? The lesson is sometimes you need to beg for forgiveness rather than ask for permission, right? I'm sure we're going to get a lot of heat for that though. Like, so <laughs> people, people don't like well, that the laws need to change anymore. based on what the, the people want, right? The people who write the laws, it's not the other way. Yeah. People want UberX. That's right. Okay, so here it is. The background, carpool, Facebook carpool groups. You got to pub post publicly, $20 each way. Virginia Breeze, $42. Lyft and Uber, $442 yeah. each way. That's that's a lot. Okay, so basically I mean, all this carpool. makes sense. I think the tricky thing with a pitch like this is like, once we know there were multiple like funded companies back in the day who tried this, you know, it, where my head goes immediately is like, why now, right? Yeah. Why now? So maybe we'll, maybe we'll find out here. Facebook yeah, okay. carpool groups suck. We know that. That's, that's yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's Craigslist is garbage. It takes a, over an hour to find a ride. Facebook carpool groups lack of safety. I mean, I'm amazed that people can't get rides. Period. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like if it takes an hour, that's like pretty fast, actually. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Hitchhike. Fast search time, three to five seconds compared to Facebook in one hour. Uh, machine learning to notify users with the best possible rides. Why do you need machine learning? Uh, kind of a safe community. All users are vt.edu email verified. Drivers go through screening process inbuilt messaging. I bet it works. I mean, the main thing is like, how does it get big, right? Like, I'm sure even this community loves it, and I bet they could even build a business off of it. The big thing that most investors have to think about is like, is this the one, and how does it become a like hundred right. times or a thousand times bigger? And then I haven't seen anything that like screen says that yet. 
But they do, they have like explained what it is and taking care of like the on the ground, like within, is it Virginia Tech? Yep. Or whatever VT is. Is it Vermont? Anyway. Yep. Within that community, no, I bet VT it VT is uh, Virginia Tech, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is Virginia Tech then. Yeah, so so they explained it. Here it is. It's like, it, you know, here's how it works. I think they did a pretty good job of that. And then Origin. So they started working on this. They have 300 active users yeah, last year. Yeah, I bet year, it works 10, well miles. for those, you know, 300 users and... You know, they'll get to thousands easily. Target market, students without cars, parents concerned about safety. Okay, that makes sense. Market size, here's how it gets big. 500,000 college students in Virginia, 50% on a vehicle. The number of college students in Virginia Tech is 30,000. Okay, maybe that's not how it gets big. That's just the market. Yeah, Zimride is still around, I guess. No, it's, it's a retired. It's, it's gone. Oh, it's retired. Okay. I don't, okay, so you have your competitors. I still think they need to kind of explain, maybe talk about the model and how it gets big. Here's another how it works video or something if we want to watch this okay it's an app can i oh, complain I this doesn't look like uh, idiomatic um, ios visual design <laughs> it looks like a website inside a, a web view which is fine yeah. you know every startup has to do that but it looks like an android app on an iphone it's you know oh, so you do what it, you got to do but it's not the best interesting it looks like it scans your google, facebook carpool groups no, that's smart. Okay, yeah, that's a good way to do it. All right, and uh, competitive advantages. Frapper, a proprietary technology that reduces search time from 60 seconds to 60 minutes to just three to five seconds. Driver incentive model, recommender system. I see this, the recommender system is needed because they're actually not generating rides in the app. It's just searching Facebook carpool groups. Well, that solves the supplier demand problem for sure. That's pretty good. Yes, and then safety, because it's the closed com community of college students. Revenue. Okay, this, this I, I love these graphs. Here's a graph of us estimating a perfect exponential curve. Into yeah, if it's ten percent week over week for like the rest for all of history, then this is useless. I'm sorry, but like it doesn't. This 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 is just just delete it and say you don't know. Uh, future roadmap. This also this deck is from 2020. It looks like because they have this roadmap on 2020. So you know, I'm not sure that like you should definitely have your roadmap extended in the future. Okay. Two Virginia Tech students. They seem like they're smart. One of them worked on brain computer interfaces. And this seems promising. I want to fund these guys for like something else. There we go. There you had it. What did so this convinced you that they're smart? Yeah, they're but, smart and they can build stuff and they have like the right intuition around um, how to bootstrap um, two sided marketplace and they hacked it and uh, yeah. it's up and running and uh, those are all. You will go far in your life with those very basic things, actually. But it didn't convince you you wanted to fund this business particularly. Yeah, I mean, that's it. the hard part is like, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time, right? Like really smart people go and they go into a part of the idea maze that has like a thousand dead bodies or they have like big stinky been dead for like 10 years sort of dead bodies that like are huge. <laughs> yeah. If really, really smart people five to 10 years ago worked really hard, to try to win this market and they decided this sucks and like we're going to some other part of the idea maze and built like an IPO class business on that. Why, why try to do that thing again? Unless there's like something structural, right? I mean, the, the only yep. caveat I, I would say is like, sometimes someone tries to do web van, it sucks and it's a giant dead body and it scares away people. And then the iPhone happens and then Instacart happens. Right. So, and that, that so one has had to be a really why good now. why now, right? The why yep. now was 70% of uh, normal people, not just the elites, but normal people uh, had smartphones at that moment. And so that was actually the moment to create Uber and Lyft and Instacart and DoorDash and all these things. And yeah, that's, yep. that's the hard part about like this particular idea is there's not a why now. And there's still like a big honking dead body in this part of the idea maze. Well, there it is. I, I agree. There's no why now. I would love to see what these founders do in the future though because they they have they have what it takes they need to go to a different part of the idea maze all right sai kasim you heard it here first we want to fund you for something in the future that's not this yeah <laughs> hey that might save them a bunch of time i feel like it will thanks for roasting us gary and justin that actually didn't feel like a roast um so thanks for the kind words we look up to you guys we do agree with the why now part that you mentioned with hitchhike we made a classic mistake a beginner's mistake which was we put more effort into the engineering and building aspect instead of actually talking to users and scaling the product regardless we got an acquisition offer last year for hitchhike we actually pivoted last year to solving a more pressing problem at the time COVID 19 and built one of the first open source contact tracing apps. Okay, join. It's a welcome to join a community-based mental health app 
built for the workplace. That seems useful. I like that they have a um, agenda here on address mental health, gap in support, meet, join, how to get started. That's kind of like telling a story. Um, I think that the titles like are a little bit weird. All right, here's the team. Larissa Licha, CEO, and Kendra Wilkins, CPO. Seems like a great team. Uh, okay, 18 years in tech. Led the industry creation of two industry changing business units. Uh, you know, maybe they should, that could be more specific, you know. Executive summary. The problem, unaddressed mental health comes at a significant cost to companies, but fears of liability hold companies back from providing an inclusive environment. Is it actually a Slack or is it a chat platform they made? Sounds like initially an anonymous Slack. Interesting. You know, they have a great team that knows about this and the opportunity is unmet. All right, maybe they'll have more about the solution because I'm still not exactly Yeah, I don't know what it. the solution is. Yeah. Okay, here's the unaddressed mental health crisis. One trillion productivity lost every year, social isolation and stigma, underrepresented groups more affected, Employee research groups are a common practice and uh, mental health ERGs have more than doubled in 2020. You don't believe all of that. I guess I don't know what an employee resource group is. And then this sort oh, of- Oh, you haven't worked in a big company long, like recently enough. Gary. Oh, I've never. I mean, the last time I did it was Microsoft in 2005. So, and I, what employee is Employee resource groups are like affiliate group, affiliation groups of like, like there's like a like a black Twitter employees resource, you know, ERG or something, or like a LGBTQ ERG at Atrium. We had all these ERGs for different. What do they do? Kind of, they kind of like meet and talk about how to make change in the company to support these groups better or like employee issues that relate to that Makes type sense. of identity. Okay. So it's kind of like a support groups for different kinds of, you know, it's not just identities, but also different interests sometimes and, and backgrounds and stuff like that. I actually think they're useful. Yeah, people need that. Um, all right, challenges in providing support. A pool of people that re can relate remains small. Fear, lack of privacy results in fear of repercussion. I'm like, is it kind of like blind? Oh, that's a good question. Is blind like still a company? Do they make I money? I think it's doing really well. Yeah. That's what I heard. I mean, remember back in the day, I funded, you funded Secret. You know, Secret. Yeah. And then Secret kind of imploded. I mean, it was incredible engagement. And then after six months, people were like, I don't really want this in my life anymore. <laughs> and then, uh, but the company version works really well. And, yeah, because um, you have to work at a company, right? Yeah. Like you and then yeah. there's all kinds of stuff that you probably want to be able to say, but nobody wants to say. Yeah. Every so often people try the anonymous social network or pseudonymous you know, set of people you already know, sort of social network. I think it might work eventually, but it's interesting to see how there are other enterprise uses like this, maybe. I mean, it did yeah. make people feel less alone because you could say things and you could say things that um, you might fear uh, saying, like, attached to your name. And then the only downside is sometimes people say things that are lies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For the purpose of bullying, <laughs> which is not so good. Yep. Okay, so these guys are, this is, I mean, I, I, I believe this is like another challenges. slide that I sort of, it does not push forward it sort of like says a lot of the things that i think in a different way on a page before and i feel like they're right. the best thing about slides uh to the best thing to do for slides is to figure out how to make each slide sort of like mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive yeah and so that means like if you see two slides back to back and they sort of say the same things in different ways like take the parts so, that just chunk it up a little bit more because they're like sort of blended if it doesn't advance the story and it's not it's not great okay mental health isn't created equal our experience differs across identities and communities stigma remains a barrier i mean they keep saying that right that people can relate to sharing they can relate and share experiences are a missing link for many on the mental health journey once again doesn't really advance the story enough meaningful gap in the existing solutions yeah there's seven cup i wonder where they are they make it sound like they are in between mindful and clinical treatment then yeah this is the existing journey it's like fire father's diagnosed with terminal illness sends note to manager to let the company know has to call eap regarding short-term leave receives a pdf yeah. looks up. this is a good story i mean i think this kind of stuff happens all the time i think that there's just too many slides before we're getting to like what we do you know yeah that's right community-based mental health app one-to-one -one peer connection Custom communities. So I kind of assume that the names and avatars are privacy. I, they're, they're anonymized. Yeah, must be. That makes okay. sense. And this is like inside your company, right? Yeah. Being a safe space that works for you. So you set matching preferences. You know, so it's kind of like seven cups inside your company is what no, I'm that, understanding. That makes sense. So it's like you're chatting with your your matches and then you can, there's a group chat or something like That's that. That's super useful. And it helps all parts of the organization because employees remove shame and stigma because it's anonymous. The ERG leads don't have to do as much work. They're just saying, hey, use this app. 
leadership can say, hey, we made this like awesome app available to you. Like, aren't we progressive? And the companies make you feel like you're belonging while reducing and my And you're working risk. really hard. So you're, yeah, you're able to get back to, get back to work. Yep, you fix yep. your depression and get back to the grind more, much more easily. I mean, I buy that. You know, there's a YC company, Meru Health, that's working really well on that side too. I mean, yeah, I mean, Modern Health is also like, you know, I mean, the companies want to provide this type of stuff, to, this type of infrastructure. Yeah, for it their, makes sense. Yeah, now for their employees. Okay, this I don't really, I don't really get what this slide is. It's basically, there's an arrow with all these other competitors, community and peer support, low barrier, high effectiveness. I feel yeah, like this would slide would be better. If, yeah. You just say like, I mean, you already kind of covered it, what the benefits are, right? So this is like, I don't, I don't get this. All right. Here's the go-to-market. Partner with employee resource groups. Yeah, it I makes sense. It would totally companies. work. Yeah. 60% employers plan to invest in this stuff. Can you imagine being the 40% that's like, oh, digital health? <laughs> nah. I'm We good. don't give a shit. We don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they're targeting... ERGs at progressive companies. I mean, so I this assume they just get people to pay them for this, right? And then now I'm like, yeah. how much? Yeah, right, right, right. So like once you already, in the previous slide, you said we have like Netflix and Coursera, et cetera. So like, just tell us how much you, you're charging. This is a confusing slide. I guess this is the business insights here on the right are kind of what they're showing businesses to get them to pay, right? I assume. Um, monetization strategy, near term, free trial, company benefit with it, per employee usage-based pricing. That's great. That's like kind of like modern health. There's a lot of other companies that do that. Mid term invite only network expansion free trial monthly and annual yeah. subscription plan i've been obsessed with meru health um pricing plan because it is outcomes based so you only yeah. pay if um there are fewer depressed people running around at your company how do you measure depressed people at your company i guess as a part of joining the program you take a uh, are you depressed survey every quarter and oh then, i see and then they get paid on how, how many fewer people are depressed. I like that. I like yeah. that. It's like a, yeah, that makes sense. So that's literally, you good. Don't, yeah, I mean, it's good. It's outcomes based. It aligns everyone. And then, you know, it's free for people to try. And then they assume a bunch of risk, but that means that it's on them to make it work. So I kind of like that. It's like the ISAs of making yeah, people not like, depressed at your company. Like Lambda school for, for yeah. <laughs> fixing your mental health. Yeah, it's like, we'll really try and make your people happier. And then if not, then we're out money. We're out our investors' money. Love that. Yeah. All right. So here they skipped over how much they're going to charge, presumably because they don't know. And here's they want $250,000 to execute this plan that includes, basically, it sounds like they haven't built this yet. Because Yeah, it doesn't sound built. This is definitely one of those where if you had a co-founder who was a great engineer, this would be probably closer to an Insta fund. And then, yeah, yeah it's just get, get co-founders to be product and engineering with you. You know, it's just important. Yeah. yeah. If you can't build it without funding, it's going to be a heavy lift to get that initial capital, you know, at least from an investor who doesn't already know you and just love you. Yeah. And I would say like learn to code, right? And it's like, you don't yeah. have to be the person who does it, uh, but it will help you recruit the person who does do it. Yeah. Because you, and I mean, then... as an engineer, you know, early on, you get like bombarded by people who are like, I just have this idea and I just need an engineer. And like, there's sort of infinity people who are like in the, I just need an engineer mode. <laughs> yeah. And then if it's okay to be that person, it's just not okay to be that person and like put absolutely zero effort into learning how to code. <laughs> yeah. And if you do learn to code and you make an initial version of it, like you immediately jump to the head of the line on people who, you know, want to find an engineer because it's like oh you know as an engineer i would totally work with someone who put the work yeah. into learning like just enough to show that they were serious about it i agree here we sit and then the slide this closes with we appreciate you i kind of like yeah, that's that very thoughtful that's necessary for this you know that's the right kind of that'd be fun if you got to the end of it and it was like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> it would be a complete surprise yeah, yeah. Uh, i like that deck i mean it's it they could remove like probably a quarter of the slides but um, I like the idea. I think it would work. Yes. Less is often more. I mean, that's the, that's the lesson. I, you don't have to say things three different ways. Just say it one powerful way. Hi, Justin. Hi, Gary. Thank you so much for roasting the join pitch deck. It's super exciting to be part of this roast. It was extremely helpful to have you two walk through the join pitch deck and really getting real time feedback. Uh, all of the feedback was super fair from, you know, our problem statement being too repetitive and 
as a result, getting kind of too late into the product and what we're actually doing. Uh, we're also currently actually on a journey of adding a CTO to our team. We're both technical product managers with some coding background, but we definitely want to have that addition of an official technical co-founder. And yeah, right now we're actually two weeks out from launching Join officially with companies. So we're super excited. But yeah, thank you again for roasting our pitch deck. As said, it was extremely insightful to get input from both of you. So thanks so much. All right, guys, that was the first part of the video. We're going to drop the second part on Gary's channel. Uh, so you can go check it out uh, right now. If you like this, like the video, subscribe, turn on video notifications, and I'll be your best friend forever. One more thing, if you like this content, well, I'm gonna do a little experiment with this company, LiveSpot. So a couple months ago, I invested in my friend James. I knew him from Y Combinator, uh, and he is starting a new company. I knew him from Y Combinator where I backed his company. He ended up selling his company to Twitch, and uh, now he's starting a new company. And his new company, LiveSpot, helps creators uh, create live classes. Uh, so I invested in the company and apparently now I'm on the hook to test it uh, with my channel and I am giving a live class twice a month. This class is like startup office hours, doing it with my friend Jason Tan, the founder of SIF Science, the fraud detection company that's now a unicorn. Uh, so you get Jason, myself, we're teaching this class twice a month, 90 minutes of time. And uh, we're, while we're doing this experimental phase uh, for this first month, we'll donate all the proceeds to Mind Matters and SF. Uh, so it goes to a good cause. If you like this content, you feel like you get value and you want more, you can check out our live class. We'll drop the description below. Uh, in the class, we do like deck reviews, we'll do pitch reviews, you know, problem solving, working through problems with your startup. Um, we'll just do generally Q&A on whatever topics you're interested in. So check it out. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. See you guys next time. Got some water.